Hi, YouTubers. Welcome to Community CPA's 3 p.m. webinar. See, I always were in the office, right? Today I'm in a chicken coop. <laughs> it is really great. Look at the chickens. Come with me and see how the chickens would be coming to me. So this is farming, okay? Farming in the very um, romantic way. It's not hard. It is sweet. Look at the chicken. All right. So today, what we are talking about is Schedule F. Schedule F is just not a schedule, right? Schedule F is actually a farming activity. Just look at what I'm doing. And I am feeding chickens. Those chickens produce eggs and they are really cool. They're not friendly to me because it's not my farm, okay? This is Stephanie's farm called Happy Valley. And we use her farm as example to show you how do we do taxes related to uh, farming activities. All right, follow me. I want to show you where the eggs are, okay? Come with me. So this is the chicken croup and they're coming in to the egg place. I can't, not Easter yet, but will be. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Another one. Sorry, chicken. I just love your eggs. I'm going to rob these two for today. Look at that. And now let's go to our webinar, Real Places, so we can teach you what to do with schedule a farming return. And now I'm going to exit the chicken group. Come with me. So what we what we were looking at is the is the schedule of farming activity uh, tax return. What to do, how to do that. And hopefully with this, and you can really see the chicken croup and also how that being depreciated and also how that becoming a tax refund when you have a loss. So let's take a look. Why do you have a loss? And it is possible to have a gain, but when you have a gain, that's a happy event. When you have a loss, it is also a happy event. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So let's see. Now we are coming over to look at our prepared um, content for you. Stephanie has a full-time job. She has a farm called Happy Valley. She raised chicken and sell both chicken and eggs. Originally selling was just to her friends and neighbors, but over the COVID time, her chicken has gaining popularities because she fed them with wild berries for main food consumption, see? So her chicken lays berry flavored egg. <laughs> I know you're laughing. Don't do that because it is possible. Of course I can't smell it, but I mean, that's the marketing, right? Her chicken eggs lays berry flavored eggs. And then she, she now selling them under Happy Valley brand name and on the internet ship across the country. And she filed her 2020 tax return with us. So now I want to show you the key forms in, in, the, in the tax return and I will show you her tax return, okay? And look at this, this is schedule F that you need to be familiar with. And it is not a schedule C, it is schedule F. You probably go, well, you know, what's the difference? The difference is big because on schedule C, you file activities of other businesses but for Schedule F, it has to be farm related. And I will give you the list of farm related. And this is the second page of the, of the form. Uh, you, you see, this is first page and second page. And in here, I want to, you know, because we just visited Chicken Croup, okay? And I want to tell you that Chicken Croup is 100% deductible. And if you, um, you know, for you can use Section 179 to deduct your whole build out. And Stephanie spent 15,000 to build the chicken coops. And you saw me went in to, to grab eggs and uh, you know, there's a bedrooms for the chicken. There's also um, the backyard, the trees on top of the chicken coops, the coops who are um, scheduled to have the, the net wide enough that the, the berries can fall in, but 
the eagles, the, the other wild animal not gonna come in to eat the chicken, right? So with all of that, it's 15,000. And you can use section 179 to deduct it. You can also use bonus depreciation. So this is where I want to show you on the tax return as well. And who should file? What is considered a farm for Schedule F? This is the very question you would ask, right? You would say that, well, what if I just have a big backyard and I was doing farming activities? And I mean, as long as you are licensed properly in the city, some city don't allow you to have a little farm in the backyard, but some city does. So make sure you check with your city. As long as that is allowed and you can properly do it, and that could be classified as your Schedule F activity. So livestock and the dairy and poultry and the fish, fruit farmers, and uh, of course those ranches and um, um, all the other, um, what do you call that spice farm? You know, I have a client that who does nothing but plantation for spices. So they, they plant them, they dry them, they package them. So those are, those are farming activity. We're on the farm, so the dogs is, Come on, peanut, don't scream like that. Um, so you will, you will see my peanut. Now the NIC code, and I know, I'm not gonna go through this, but I want you to take a snapshot picture. Make sure that you put the NIC code on your, uh, on your tax return when you file farm related business. And for the income and the, the form, on the form on the Schedule F, it will ask you uh, all of these questions that you need to know. Okay, so you need to identify your principal farming activity. And so, for example, in uh, Happy Valley, Stephanie's farm, and Happy Valley produces uh, eggs and a chicken. And the eggs is berry flavored eggs. The chicken is a freedom, happy, and a berry um, appetite kind of chicken. So there, when she sells her chicken, the chicken also is having a higher uh, selling price just because the consumption of the chicken was very uh, was for certain kind of food, not anything uh, and, and not anything, everything. I, I don't know whether the poultry, the, the I don't know whether the chicken meat would have a better flavor, but you know, that is one type of chicken that she's raising, right? Income from sales, you need to know that. Income, income from the other items you see here, agriculture program and the Olaf stuff, that is also income, but it is not something you get from selling your poor produce. So Stephanie only have income from selling her chicken and the eggs. So the other kind of income is, is not part of, is not her income. She doesn't have it. But not to say that if she grow her um, chicken business is bigger and she can participate in cooperative distributions, she can participate and in the other program and if the chicken is, um, for example, if the chicken got diseases, die in one, in one shot, they all die, then they, she might get the insurance proceeds to cover the losses. So all of that is other income, right? Those are the income you see right here. Then of course, and what uh, we want you to have this couple of special considerations, understanding how income is divided. And a gross cash income, those are the income that really it just, you know, once Stephanie sell them on internet, people just pay online. So that is actually considered gross cash income. That's really the income that they got. And the gross farm income is same as the gross cash income with additional, with additional income such as value of home consumption of self-produced food. Because Stephanie probably eat her own chicken eggs, don't you think? I, I didn't ask her, but I think she must. If she does that, she should put in a gross farm income. That should be the, the, the money she got from the customer plus her own consumption. So that would be her total income, right? Net cash income, it is less all the cash expenses such as the feed, seed, fertilizer, all of these things, those are called cash, um, net cash income. Net farm income, it is also um, minus the non-cash expenses, uh, for example, uh, the home house household expenses. Maybe Stephanie has household things that doesn't belong to the farm, but it was used for the farm. So you you would consider that is net farm income, right? So really, this is where uh, you know you get an idea, and whatever money you got, and you need to add your self uh, consumption to be your total income. 
whatever you expensed out and you need to also subtract your um, uh, consumption, uh, your expenses that is not with your farm, but with you. And then you actually uh, used your household things for that. So this is a fair trade, right? And, and you know, uh, our, our tax system, I always tell people that, you know, I am very familiar with the Canadian tax system. I'm also very fairly familiar with Australian and the, uh, you know, Asian countries tax system. I still say that come back to the end of the day, I still think the U.S. American tax system is one of the most fair one. And it is really to consider what you really spend, what you really earn. So this is the spirit of that too, right? Don't forget your consumption. So I was talking about the income. We're good. Now let's just do the expenses side. It's also very important, okay? And on that Schedule F, you have expenses. So I made a list of that, but I will go to Stephanie's, I will go to Stephanie's uh, return to show you what she claimed, give you a really good idea of what that is, okay? Now, uh, let's go to the next slides I have. This is where the IRS give you the resources for Schedule F. And I, I always tell my folks that, you know, you, you can go on internet, search everything. You can come to YouTube and are really uh, kind of learning through the videos that we provide you. But at the end of the day, the most authoritative uh, website where you really should learn your things, it is from IRS website. So this is what in our firm, we have 30 some people. So I always tell folks that you can do Google as, as much as you want, but you, you know, in terms of authoritative um, answers, and irs.gov, that is where you go. So I give you this link just in case you needed that for, um, for, your, uh, for your answers and the questions. Okay, now I want to mention that to you, 2020. The reason I'm still having 2020 on here is because we're not done with 2020. 2020 extended 1040 plus Schedule F. And that's still on October 15. See, we still have like uh, quite a few days to go to get your 1040 done. If you happen to file Schedule F, perfect timing. I want you to understand what's out there, okay? And the COVID, COVID food assistance program is called CFAP, provides direct payment to producers of eligible agriculture commodity adversely affected by coronavirus pandemic to help offset the sales losses and the increased market costs associated with COVID pandemic. So this is the one that you, uh, you could participate. So if you are a farmer, you should have already known that. And that is reported, you report the full amount on line 4A and the 4B, those are the income line for, uh, for, your, for your Schedule F when you receive those kind of uh, income. That, you know, you, you hear me, it is, it is saying that if coronavirus adversely affected you, and also made you do more marketing. Did you hear me saying that? So that means the cost of expanding marketing, the loss of the, the sales are all qualified to be basically to be paid by this CFAP program. And of course, standard mileage, don't forget is 57.5 cents per mile for your activities in farming. And the payroll protection PUP is also made available to the Schedule F. And increased business interest expense means that if you have a large interest expenses in the past, it's limited, but here they actually increase the threshold. You can deduct more. And the same with net operating loss. It used to have a limit, now no more limit for farming. And of course, credit for self-employed person, new refundable credit are available to certain self-employed person impacted by coronavirus. So that is all new things for 2020, when you file Schedule F, you should know. And the other thing we want to mention to you is in 2021, there will be a change to Medicare uh, taxes. So that will have no limitation on the amount of wages subject to Medicare taxes. So that just means that uh, the, the, social, the Medicare taxes rate for 2021 will also be um, uh, will also be changed. That will be in a publication 51, be used in 2021, not this year. So something new, I want you to 
um, be aware of that and knowing that what you're going into on 2021. There's more changes related to 2021. Folks, if you go back, if you listen to my webinar, um, quite, don't quite remember, maybe about two weeks ago, I have a webinar related to uh, Biden administration tax changes. I really would encourage you to listen to that because that gives you the roadmap. We don't know what is final, but obviously that is something that Biden is looking at approval and we, uh, a lot of our client does, does the tax planning with us at the end of the year. Typically we started that already right now, but this year it will start that after the, um, after the tax reform is completely finalized because that would impact every one of us, the impact Happy Valley as well. So now I give you this link so you can look at the latest version. You can always snap a picture of our PowerPoint. That's really why we have a PowerPoint for you. And I know I'm not looking at you uh, on, the, on the picture because I'm kind of looking at the PowerPoint right now, but you know that I, um, you know, I know what you are looking at. So we're in sync, we, we're on the same page, we're on the same page. So the key takeaway is that the uh, IRS schedule app is used to report taxable income earned from farming agriculture activities. The schedule must be included in 1040, regardless the type of farm income, whether it is a primary business activities or not. So you might be a, you, you might just be like Stephanie because she actually have a real uh, W-2 job. And then she also have Happy Valley. So you can see where, how her taxes is, I will show you. And the Schedule F also allows um, different farm related credits and deductions. And I talk to us if you are just getting overwhelmed. Don't get overwhelmed. I always tell my, you know, my, my client that, you know, the reason you come to community CPA is for us to take your anxiety away. And if we don't do that, that just means we didn't do a good job. And the taxes, actually, I have not met any client who are unwilling to pay taxes when the taxes is done correctly, properly, understandably. Because it is important to make our client understand why they're paying million dollars on taxes. And it is also important, equally important, why you are getting refund. So you don't want to go to the tax preparer almost like pressing a button or doing, um, doing a lottery. Like if you got a refund, you'll be like, oh, wow, you are magical. And the next year you didn't get a refund, you're like, you're not good. You don't want to go to your tax preparer like you're going to casinos, right? You want to go to your tax preparer like you go to someone who knows you and you are so comfortable and without anxiety. The word of anxiety is so popular now than ever because that's what side effect coronavirus is bringing to human beings. And we are all at a certain level have more anxiety than ever. And me too. I can, you know, I know you, you're going to be saying, wow, well, what kind of anxiety do you have, Ying? And you, you visiting farm and, you know, you just look fine and uh, don't see you have anxiety. No, I do. I have so much anxiety, just like you. But one thing I do well, and my firm does well, is to help our client to not have anxiety related to tax, related to money. So hopefully, this is really the webinar that, you know, giving you that and making you feel that, oh, yeah, I know I can give this to community CPA, they will do a good job. So now let's go to let's go to the tax return I promised you to see. Remember, I promised you to look at Stephanie's tax return. So now let me go there. I'm going to stop sharing and I will bring up and my um, the tax return for Stephanie. So then we can do a farm tax return together. Let's see. So this is a farm return with Stephanie. Okay, so I am showing Stephanie's tax return. And look, she has a job, pays her 65,000 a year. 
okay? And she has under line eight, you see that 1,000. And let me make this big. So she has W2 income 65 and the 1,000 that is on line eight. And I'll show you quickly, that is the farm income she made out of raising those chicken behind me, okay? And then that gave her total 66,000 income. And you can see that she actually, uh, she filed single, so it is a standard deduction. There is a qualified business income deduction reduces her income from 65.929 down to 53.343. All right. So now let's look at the second page. So the taxes, she had 7,000 withholding, okay, from her W-2. So her tax calculated to be 7,522. So obviously there is a self-employment tax got calculated from the farming activity. So you can tell that she ended up has to pay $664. So now let's look at this $1,000 farming. This is a schedule one and the third page of the tax return. So shows that the farming income from schedule F is 1,000 and also shows that there is a 50% of self-employment tax reduction. Means that they don't count 1,000 as her income, they count 1,000 minus 71. So that's 929 for the income for the farm. Now come to see self-employment tax that is calculated on that 1,000 is a 14.20%. That's why we got for $142 for the self-employment. And then look at the farm. This is schedule F, right? Look at this. And she made $24,075 in income. And she had car expenses, 575. So where does that come from? That's mileage. So she counted it. She drove 1,000 miles during the COVID. Who is going anywhere? Nobody going anywhere on COVID years. So in 2020, she only just drove between FedEx and you know places like that to ship her eggs to other people. So she only drove about a thousand. And look at this $15,000 deduction called depreciation in section 179 expense. So this is a depreciation, it's a bonus depreciation. And we can see that the, you remember we went to the group and we know that she actually built it for 15,000. Everything came out as a deduction. And then you see the feed dollar is 1,000 for feed and the 1,000, 250 for shipping. And here supplies is 5,000. So we come on down to here, we see that she has a net farm profit of 1,000. See, so this is where, and we see Stephanie making $1,000. Now I want you to look at this. And when you file Schedule F, I want you to know three things. Number one, I want you to care about your farming equipment. And chicken groups is not a building, okay? They classify, they're in the category of farm asset, farm equipment. So you can deduct that in that fashion, not like your house, okay? Then the other thing, this is one thing I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know is to know about your self-employment tax that you have on your income. If you don't have profit, of course, you don't have self-employment tax, but if you do, and I want you to know how that is being calculated. So that's number two. Number three, and what I want you to know, it is this qualified business income and the deduction, okay? Qualified business income deduction, it is a concept that introduced by President Trump through his tax reform. So he introduced about 20% of your, um, of your income would be reduced. So let's say if you have a $1,000 um, $1, uh, um, net profit and with calculation and about 20% of that will reduce your 1,000. So you don't pay the full amount on taxes. You only pay a portion. 
So I bring out this sheet because I want you to know. Remember the chicken farm, uh, the qualified income is nine to nine. Do you remember how that dollar come about? That dollar come about $1,000 minus $71. You remember that is the deduction for half of the self-employment tax, you remember? So that is the nine to nine. That's where that number come from. And so you can tell that nine to nine, if you do 20%, I think that gives you 186. So 186 minus nine to nine, that is our taxable income. And I, I prove that to you by come bring you back to the first page, okay? Bear with me. I really want you to understand this. This is not hard science at all. This is just a general knowledge. See, that's the 1,000 farm income, right? And I hope you see that. That's the first page of 1040. And remember that 71 is 50% of self-employment tax, and we reduce that. And this 186 is reducing your income. That's how we arrive at 53,343. Otherwise, if you don't have that qualified business income deduction, then you are going to pay taxes on that 186. So when you have a gain in, in Schedule F, I want you to know that you need to have a qualified uh, income deduction. A lot of times I see people missing that. I didn't know why they're missing it, but this is a new rule that you really need to know, okay? And it is available for already two years at least, three years, and so you should not be missing it. And this is the bonus depreciation report. And you can, you can see chicken croup. I put in uh, Stephanie, put that in service on January the 1st, 2020. And uh, the cost is 15,000. And the current uh, bonus is 15,000. So they, she deducted all. All right. So this is one, this is one um, situation where Stephanie made money on the farming activity. So now let us look at another one. Another one, uh, I'm going to share screen with you again. Another one is the one that Stephanie didn't make it. She had a loss for the farm activity. So let's take a look at how does that work when she has a loss. So here, she still makes the same salary. She has $11,075 losses. And you see how that offset her income just like one minus two or two minus one, right? It's simple, straightforward subtraction. So her taxable adjusted gross is actually 53, 925. And with standard deduction, she paid taxes on 41, obviously less than what she was paying taxes for, right? But you also notice there's no more qualified business income deduction because she didn't make money. So that didn't come out. And there's also no more self-employment tax because she didn't make money. So there's no self-employment tax, right? So now let's look at the second page. So her taxes is 4,926. Remember her W-2 withheld 7,000. That's why she got $2,000 refund. So Stephanie come to you and she's like, you know, um, I, you know, I made a lot of sales this year. Am I going to pay taxes or not? So now you understand why the tax preparer who works on a tax return, if they're really knowledgeable, they would not be able to give you the answer because what they're thinking right away is that they want to know whether you have farm asset you purchased and they want to know um, whether you have did consumption on your own and whether you put your household stuff in the farm as well. And they want to know the mileage you're driving and they want to know what kind of, um, you know, maybe you got other program income that, you know, you just don't remember you already spent it and, uh, you know, the taxpayer needs to know. You see how there's so many variables. It is really difficult for you just say, well, do I get money back or not? People don't know. Taxpayers don't know. The one who's going to tell you, well, you're going to get the money back. You know what? It is no different from people guessing, are you going to have a boy or girl if, if you're pregnant? And people goes boy, the other one goes girl. Of course, it's 50% accurate, right? So it's a 50%. You know, you may get refund and you may not. So don't try to play that game. And taxes is not a gambling. 
Tax is not a guessing game. Tax is a scientific, accurate calculation and a strong logic. So I always say that the person who does taxes really well, actually mathematicians. I know they will be like, we don't want to be your tax preparer. But I mean, tax uh, mathematicians are the people really have a strong logic. And also once they know taxes, they're the best tax preparer. Oh, people, some people won't like my comments on that, but you know, just my opinion. That's why I have a disclaimer from the beginning, right? So you don't hold me against me. Of course, the CPAs who pass the CPA exam, people who are learning uh, CPA tricks and, you know, so they are, they, they can be good. But I also have meet people who, I have not met mathematicians who are not good, but I have met um, CPAs who really, don't understand how to apply things to uh, to the real world. So here, look at the farm, loss, 11,000, right? And here we go, and we will look. So Stephanie made 12,000 income, and uh, she also built the group, so it deducted 100%. That's why, that's why we have a $11,075 uh, losses. And then we still have the depreciation, bonus depreciation. So that's where our losses coming in is definitely get refund instead of paying taxes. So I think this is where uh, we, uh, th this is where we think that uh, our schedule F filing can be really become a very uh, real knowledge to you. I didn't really want to do a webinar and uh, you know, just give you a theory and or do a whole bunch of advertising and then make you wait, wait, wait and say one word about what I was about to say. No, we actually do real things, right? We actually, like, you know, go to the chicken farm and we show you the eggs and we show you the chicken and you know that what Stephanie did, she has the crew being built, which including the fence top down because of the top fence need to have a certain certain conditions so the, the chickens can eat berries. And then you have this place they can lay eggs. So all of that is part of farming activity. All of that is available to her to deduct her W-2 income. So if she has a loss, she for sure can benefit from the tax refund. Of course, you realize that I didn't do the state taxes, right? The state, state taxes in general, coordinating with the federal tax return. So if you have a loss in farming at the federal, you would have the same for the state. The depreciation though can be different. You see how we write off the 15,000. And in 2020, many states did not have the legislature pass the tax law to accept what the federal government is doing. So on the state, people couldn't really write off the 15,000. They can only write off a portion of it. So that created Oh, on federal we got refund. On state, I'm paying taxes. A lot of tax prepare, a lot of tax, um, our taxpayers, and ask that question. Oh, why is I'm paying so much on state? No, why? It's just the state didn't pass the same. Did not uh, pass the, uh, the the their state legislature for the same rule that the federal is implementing. But a lot of state is trying to catch up, and we actually know that. Um, the state was trying to re refund people more money just because they just recently passed the rule. So they are making retroactive changes to your tax return. So with that, we are through today's webinar for um, Chicken Farm. I hope you certainly learned some and I hope you enjoyed our real life demonstration about a chicken. And if you want to know how to build Chicken Farm, um, maybe we can tell you what Stephanie Chicken Farm is like, but every state, every city is different. Just make sure, like I said, you need to check with your city to build a chicken farm in the back in the backyard. But otherwise, just like Stephanie have a Happy Valley Farm and her Happy Valley Farm also have a fruit fruits. Uh, she also plant 100 fruit trees. So it's really, uh, it, it's a farm going to produce uh, fruits and also produce chickens and eggs. So I hope you enjoyed this webinar and we will see you again 
And we will try to make our webinar just like this with a lot of a real life demonstration. And being in the farm today is so hot. It's a, it's, a really good, it's a really good day to be in the farm. I will talk to you all and email us if you want any, of, any subject to be talked about. And if you want us to do any demonstration, we'll do our best. And we have clients, we can go to client site to get things done for you. And I'll talk to you again. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.